or... Now, who is the greatest? Is it Faker? Is it Uzi? Is it me? Is it Tyler1? I'm sure we all have our own opinions, but in this video, the Jizz is going to be making the case that Chovy is in fact the greatest player we have ever seen, or at least the best player in the world at this moment in time. But why is that? What makes Chovy so special? Well, to prove my point, we are going to be watching a 23-2 game with over 11 CS per minute in Korean Challenger, and trying to work out how a game like this is even possible. To do it smurfing in gold is one thing, right? But to do it against the top 0.01%, doesn't seem real. Now, if you like this type of video, like the video, and if you want more of these high ELO analyses, make sure to head on over to the Game Week website. From Challenger Tier Champion courses and guides to videos on improving your micro and macro, we have everything you will need to peak this season. So unclamp yourself and sign up for that exclusive access. Links in the description and comment section. All right, so let's get into the gameplay, guys. And the first thing that Chovy does so well, especially when he's playing strong early game champions like Aurelia, is how he gets off cheater recalls. And I'm sure we've all heard of this before, but as a coach, I don't really like the term, because what we're really describing when we say cheater recall is just an optimal recall. And it's really just a product of good wave management. So as you can see, when this wave has passed the halfway point of Chovy's lane, he's going to hard push this into Viego's tower. Now, the great thing about Aurelia is that she is so good early game and her wave clear is probably the best. In fact, it is the best out of any champion in the first two, three levels. But we can apply this to any champion, guys. And the tip here, I'm going to rename it from cheater recalling to stacking and recalling. So our first goal is to get the push in the lane. And once you have the push, so the minion ways of pushing into the enemy tower, we are going to stack a wave. Now, stacking a wave will happen naturally if you just last hit the minions. So we don't want to be hard pushing until that next wave arrives in lane and collides with the current minion waves in that position. Then that's where we can go ham and hard push exactly like Chobi does here. What this means is that when the wave crashes into Viego's tower, because you do it so quickly, it creates space for the next minion wave to come into the lane. So these minions here, if you think of these minions like a wall, like a blockade, if there's no blockade there, the next minion wave will get to the middle of the lane and it will reset as if it was level one. Now this is great if you have teleport, but even if you don't have teleport, you can get back to your lane with an extra item. It might be a cull, it might be another D-blade, a longsword, whatever it is. The point is, is that you're on the map at your strongest point because you've spent all of your gold. And I know in this game, Chovy is one and zero. He got a lucky first blood. But here's the thing, guys. When you have gold from minions or kills or turret plates, the only way that number of minions you have, the number of kills you have, the only way these really matter in a game is when you actually spend the gold given to you. So if you don't time your recall optimally to spend this gold, what you're going to be doing is overstaying, and what you're really doing is just playing the lane as if you were 0, 0, 0. So this kill that Chovy has, for example, only really matters when he actually backs and buys an item from the gold that he has accrued. So this stacking and recalling technique, it's so effective because of these two things. It allows you to reset the minion wave so you get a clean bounce back to the middle and gives you enough time to spend that gold you've accumulated so you can get back on the map as strong as possible. And the effect this has, you can see it now, right? When Chovy's back in lane, he has a vamp scepter, via Diego has nothing really. Chovy has damage. He has sustain advantage. So in terms of this lane, there is no way Chovy can lose it now unless, of course, he runs into the enemy tower. Even if he was to get ganked, he's in such a strong position that he can perhaps 1v2 as well. So this is just the real power of stacking and recalling guys in the early game. And it's so important to recognize this because you're going to create opportunities for yourself to back and buy and get back on the map as strong as possible. And you will be the strongest champion on the map pretty much at all times if you can pull this stacking and recalling tactic off. And as we keep watching this laning phase, guys, you can see how Chovy has changed his playstyle a little bit. So in the first few levels, he was a little wary of Viego because Viego does do well in the first few levels against Aurelia. But after realizing that he's got a significant item advantage here, his positioning has changed and he's looking for trades all the time. And you can even see Viego has to give up minions just because of Chovy's positioning. So after you're able to get this stacking and recalling tactic off, guys, you have to understand what this actually means. You are going to have, if the enemy champion hasn't done the same, an item advantage. And it's so important to make use of this by trying trying to fight the enemy champion or to deny CS because some people like Viego are going to be smart. They're not just going to walk into you and give you kills for free. So to win the lane, if you don't get any kills, you have to do it through minions. And this is all set up by your positioning. So when you get back to the lane, stand on top of the melee minions and look to fight the enemy champion. Be aggressive. And it also helps when you have mechanics like Chovy here. He's able to land an E onto Viego, but just by positioning aggressively, he gives himself the chance to get this kill. And because he lands his E here, he's able to pick up the kill onto the Viego. And this is really set up, guys by the previous two to three minutes. So stacking and recalling at level three on that third cannon wave, coming back to lane with a significant item advantage, it puts you in such a strong position that it's very, very hard for the enemy champion to play the game. And it's very, very hard for you to actually lose the game. It puts you in such a strong position. Now, I often tell students, guys, that before you actually get into a fight, the 30 seconds preceding that fight, even up to a minute before you actually 1v1 the enemy champion or get into a trading situation, what really matters is what you do beforehand. So you can see how Chovy runs back to lane here. He's 
pressing tab to look at the scoreboard, which is so important. Why? To look at the enemy champion's items. So he can see that in terms of items, Viego, all he has is a D-Blade and a Phage. Whereas for Chovy, he has a Phantom Scepter, a Recurve Bow, and boots his speed on top of his D-Blade. So in terms of items, he has the advantage. Now in terms of levels, it's even. But what this does, it gives you like a feeling for how the game is going to play out in the next couple of minutes or so, because you know what's happening around the map. It sets the scenery. So this is really important to do. Every time you're running to lane or every time you're running around the map and not really doing anything, press tab to get a feeling for what's happening around you. Now, what's also really important is that before he actually gets to lane, he sees what's happening to the minion waves. And this is also essential. When you're running back to your lane, understand what is happening in it. Is it pushing to you? Is it frozen on the enemy side of the lane? Is it resetting in the middle? Is it crashing under your tower? This will inform you of the best decision in that present moment. So here, if Viego doesn't run into Chovy, let's say, this minion wave is pushing into Chovy. So what he might want to do is try to freeze this minion wave if possible. But what ends up happening instead, Viego starts fighting, and because Chovy has the item advantage, he's more than happy to take this trade on. And Zack ends up picking up the kill onto Viego. Now what happens now, guys, is so important as well. So when you kill the enemy laner, and it doesn't matter what lane you're in, if the lane isn't frozen on your side, or if you have really good pushing power like Aurelia, it is always going to be the most consistent play to hard push that minion wave currently in the lane. This means that the enemy champion who's dead, you can see Viego is still dead here, as Chovy is going to pick up another kill onto Gwen. This means that on top of the 300 gold and XP Chovy got from killing Viego, Viego is missing even more because of the minion waves. So even after you get a kill, guys, especially onto your lane opponent, it's great, right? It feels good. But we also have to sort out that lane because you never know. You might come back to it and you left it in a really bad position and the enemy champion has been able to freeze it and you might die to a gank soon after. So we always want to sort that lane out after you kill someone on the map, especially your lane opponent, because we want to get back to it in a minute's time using a bit of foresight in a favorable position. And by the way, I just want to say that I had to pull a few strings to get this video in 1080p. So if you guys are enjoying the high definition content and analysis, let me know by leaving a like down below. And I just want you to watch the next couple of minutes of this lane. You notice how Chovy is positioning really aggressively again on top of his melee minions. And the reason being, well, it's exactly the same reason, to be honest. He has the item advantage, but also now he has the level advantage as well. So if he was to chill behind his range minions and let Viego just, you know, get minions for free, it's honestly trolling, guys. So if you have a lead in your lane, always look to be aggressive. Now, of course, the enemy jungler and the enemy team comes into effect. You know, we have to think about the map. But in this game, because Chovy has managed his way so optimally and controlled his back time as optimally as well, even if he does get ganked, it's really not the end of the world. And he actually has a chance to 1v2 because he's played so well. So that when the enemy time Kench Viego and Gwen are trying to make a play over here, Chovy is the strongest champion in the map because he's been spending that gold and managing the ways perfectly. So that when a fight does break out, there is such a high chance of winning it. Now, mechanically, we can talk about him having a bit of patience using it either. But to be honest, guys, it doesn't matter how good your mechanics are. If you're making decisions before this fight happens, like as well as Chovy has been, it is going to be very rare that you are going to run it down. This is the point of this video to show you how Chovy puts himself in a position to pop off like this in high elo career. And exactly the same thing, Viego is dead. So what does he do? He goes back mid, he sorts his wave out, and he hard shoves. Now, something else that's very important here, guys, lots of people in this situation are going to hit this tower for tower plates. I want you to look at tower plates as 160 gold. For some people, it's like, oh, I'm getting tower plates. You know, it's so important. Tower plates are just 160 gold, like a minion wave, like a jungle camp. They're giving you gold, right? If you don't need that gold for a major item you're getting, you recall immediately. This means that instead of spending 10, 15 seconds to move up to the tower and then hit that tower and then recall afterwards, you are already walking back to lane with that major item. So you are on the map as long as possible, as strong as possible. This is tempo and it is one of the most complex ideas in League. But to be honest, I think it's pretty simple. All we're talking about here, guys, is timing your backs. So if you don't need that 160 gold the tower plate is giving you, you recall, you run back to lane immediately. That's all you're going to think about now for tower plates. If you don't need 160 gold, you recall ASAP. If you need it for a major item, of course, take the tower plate. It is worth sacrificing a little bit of time to get that major item. And as we see, Chovy gets back to mid lane as soon as possible, misses barely any minions, and Viego always has to fight Chovy at his strongest point, right? Look at the gold spent as well in his heart. 190 left over. That tells us, guys, that he has been back recently to spend all that gold. He's got six kills. These six kills mean something. If he had 2,000 gold still sitting there after that triple kill, and he's still staying on the map, these three kills don't mean anything. But in this situation, because he spent that gold, there is no way Viego is able to challenge Chovy in the mid lane and get back in this game. And this is really the foundation and the setup to having a game like going 23 and 2. And in terms of mechanics, I thought I'd just show you this clip. As I tell you about the game with website, guys, it's actually so sick. Look at this. Oh, the dodges, the moves, faker. I mean, Chovy, what was that? But yes, the Game Week website, I want you guys to take a look at it. Links are down below because we have the best, the most original and fresh content. Other sites, right? They legit recycle their content from YouTube and make
make you pay for it. We don't. We have content creators uploading daily, fresh challenger tier content for you. So sign up, join thousands of your fellow summoners, get exclusive access, and yes, get around it. And that is it for the video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully this video gave you the understanding you wanted and perhaps needed to understand how Chovy is able to separate himself from even the best players in Korea. But remember these ideas for your games in the future and you will be able to carry just like Chovy. And until tomorrow's video, remember to that sub button. This has been the Jizz. Bye.